the AMAs with something a little fun, you know, get some, some fun conversation going. Uh, I think that, you know, a lot of times AMAs can get repetitive of just hearing about projects, you know, pitch their idea. <laughs> and, you know, like it's, it's always fun to hear from projects, but, you know, making it a little different, making us stand out. So we have a segment that we like to do. Uh, we, we call it the AMA polls. So we allow the community to also mm. chime in. So I just okay. opened it up to everybody so they can see it. So we got 10 rapid fire questions that we'll be throwing your way. Uh, if you go to the AMA polls channel, you can vote uh, if you're in the audience. And let's get started. The first question, Bitcoin or Ethereum? Me? Do I need to answer all these or the audience is going to answer these? So you answer it, and then the audience can also answer uh, Okay. I, I'm going to go, hmm, I did click on Bitcoin, but I kind of question that. I think Ethereum, just because I think there's a lot more upside. You know, I think Bitcoin is, it's seen a ton of growth. It's been very explosive. I think that period might be somewhat over. I know people say it's going to go 100 grand or whatnot, but I think it's going to take us some longer time to achieve some higher highs. I think Ethereum's in a different boat, potentially, especially with... Uh, ETH what 2.0 I think is coming out very soon. So I'm gonna go ETH just because I think there's a lot more upside. Um yield farming or blue chips. Oh man. I'm gonna go blue chips. I mean blue chips. Yeah. You're not speaking the D Gen Lango. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I know. Gosh, like what AMA is this, right? I, I just like things that are solid. Um yield farming kind of get in trouble sometimes. So prefer to go on the more even though I did pick Ethereum, I think it's more stable, you know, than than yield farming in general. Anyway, um, let's see. Hundred Day Adventure MDB. Well, I gotta say MDB. I mean, they gave us some airtime on their Discord, and I think they're doing a great job. I mean, their chart kind of shows that. I haven't looked at it in a few days, but I think they're doing cool stuff, and they're doing what I think is right in the sense they're giving people more realistic rewards and not just being completely outrageous. Um, so I'm going to go with MDB. I know hundred days ventures is like kind of transitioning, but I'm going MDB for now. All right. Um, I'm not too familiar with the next question, so I'm not even sure I should be answering it. Maybe you could take one of those, Zach. Yeah. Cause I'll, this, this I'll explain, be us. <laughs> I'll explain them a little bit. So, uh, we have two partnerships that we're working very, very closely with, uh, Cyril from Parrotly Finance. So he runs a consulting firm helping projects out and the way that you know we kind of help each other in a partnership is we are obviously working with a lot of projects we help him out send him clients his way and he you know helps align with our values because we really want to help projects you know reach their fullest potential because getting into the web3 space is obviously a, a new change for a lot of people so you, you can have business experience you can have experience you know, in your particular field, but Web3 is a whole new beast to tackle. And there's a lot to, well, there's a lot that goes into that. And I think that he really helps out that. So he's help, helping align with our vision and, you know, we get to help him out by sending him clients. And then the second one, CoinLogic. So they are a listing service similar to CoinMarketCap. So like, a, you know, a okay. website where projects are listed, but there is like significantly more statistics out there, like very useful things that can be tracked. Like, uh, have you ever heard of Titan Chest? I have not. I have not. Excuse me if I'm a noob. <laughs> uh, that's all good. A lot of people haven't, and that's you know, no okay. Way. So Titan Chest tracks a lot of things like for Titano, the risk-free value, how much is in the treasury what yields they're generating, how many holders they have, the average holding price, like a bunch of really cool statistics, like 20 different things. And it, you know, it's like a higher level coin market cap. Plus the, the criteria to get listed on there is that you have to be KYC audited or doxxed. Mm. So oh, that's a good. Security component too. And oh, like, I can play well in there. That's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot more that goes into it than that. That's just surface level, but yeah, that's what we got for uh, KC. I'm gonna go KC Consulting because I I know Cyril. That's and I I've spoken with them before and I, I enjoy our conversations. So I'm gonna go KC Consulting on that one. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Um, next one definitely 100% MetaMask. Just because I was I've never really dealt with Trust Wallet. I was dealing with a buddy of mine who has Trust Wallet and 
I was like, why is this so hard? Like there were like two different addresses for BSC and I'm like, come on, like, come on. <laughs> so I'm going to go MetaMask because I just think it's easier. You have like one address and you can take like anything basically. Uh, agrees. Definitely going with Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Fruity Pebbles is great, but Cinnamon Toast Crunch has that awesome crunchy flavor and it's like a little bit more, a little bit more spice to it. Whereas Fruity Pebbles is just a sugar. That's um, true. Definitely going Shark Tank. I love Shark Tank. It's a really good show. It's kind of interesting to see how people, di how different people pitch and whatnot. Yeah. Um, Nobody likes one. the rebellion. I feel bad for Brent. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even familiar with that, but like, yeah, I just know of Shark Tank. So sorry, uh, Brent. <laughs> um, is, uh, creating like I'm going to go Ian. What's Brent, that? Brent is creating a. Uh, version of shark tank for web three projects so that, that's kind of like his oh project. cool oh, okay well maybe maybe if i know more about it next time i can say the other way uh i'm gonna go emp money kind of similar i don't know mu as much about grape i know and not to call you out here austin but i know austin is big on emp money and does seem like they have good mechanisms and uh, mechanics and it works so definitely gonna go emp money just not as familiar with grape would you rather have a time machine or be able to travel anywhere instantaneously? Uh, this seems like a no-brainer. I could be wrong, but I'm definitely going to go with a time machine because you can always make it to where you can just keep living. I don't know. like That That seems like a good, pretty good superpower to have. If you, if you don't want to die, just rerun the clocks. <laughs> um, let's see. Because you know, traveling anywhere is great. I mean, you can do that, though. You can still travel places. It just might take a day or two. Um, Let's see, audio or text? I'm going to go audio. I, I typically consume content in an audio fashion. I typically don't have time to read. So if I'm like working on something, um, which is almost always, I'm typically listening to like audio um, type of stuff, whether that's YouTube or, oh gosh, what's the Amazon service? Like um, audio books or something. But I'm going to go audio for sure, just because it's, it's easier to consume and I don't have to be physically looking at something. I can actually be a bit of a multitasker. So yeah, I'm right there. Yeah, man, you. that's it. Yeah. Interesting uh, responses from the community too. It's always fun to see the dynamic of people choosing what, and then, you know, some people all, all, oftentimes disagree with the person speaking and then, you know, the <laughs> person speaking, making their case for why they disagree. <laughs> going to get interesting. I love it. But yeah, now that now we got the fun questions out, um, tell us a little bit about Fortuna's Finance, um, why you started, a little bit about yourself, and all of that fun stuff. Yeah, so my name is Luke Tall. I'm the founder and CEO of Fortuna's Finance, and I was a part of a ton of different protocols, risk to earn, play to earn, nodes, auto rebase, you name it. I was in one of those protocols. Um, and as we know, uh, that that whole <laughs> scene did not end so well for many of us, and I'm, I'm definitely included in that. So felt a bit of that pain, right? And um, I've been in DeFi probably since I think like January of this year, so relatively new. But I was dealing with Bitcoin back in like 2011 when it was double digits. Very sad that I didn't hang on to it, but you know you can't predict the future. I had no idea it was going to be worth uh, you know twenty thousand dollars or something like that. So. But um, basically, Fortuna's finance, uh, I guess a couple more things about me. Uh, I own a seven-figure e-commerce business. I'm a full-stack uh, web developer, so I know a bunch of different coding language, and I know how to you know, take an idea and bring it to life myself, as well as 10-plus uh, years of experience in the IT business world. So participating and you know, as of late, really leading a lot of different projects in, in, the, in the corporate business world. So I have an idea of again, how exactly stuff is carried out and what makes a project successful versus not. So I bring a lot to the table, um, have a lot of different types of experiences, and it probably been helpful that I also know code as well because, yeah, I may not know Solidity, but I know what it takes to actually test and, and make sure things are really tight and working as expected. So that, I think a lot of projects and people underestimate the testing aspect of a project. Um, but if you just build code and kind of just loosely test it, you could, you could get in some trouble, right? So that's where you're going to have loopholes and maybe audits don't catch it or whatnot. Um, 
So testing is a super important thing just in general on IT projects. But okay, back to Fortunus. <laughs> That's more of this conceptual thing. So back to Fortunus. Basically, Fortunus was born out of all those failures, right? So I didn't have any conscious ideas about what I should like, why those projects weren't working, but I was definitely troubled. You know, I was losing some sleep over it. And one night I literally woke up, had it literally as an epiphany, and I'm like, wow, like that would be really cool if rewards could scale over time. And, you know, we build mechanisms into the protocol to help us keep inflation under control and basically build in um, some risk reward calculations that people are going to have to do. It's not going to be a simple ABC equation where, hey, if I just buy something, I just get 2% per day. There's a lot more thinking, strategery, <laughs> strategery, George Bush. Anyway, um, a lot more like strategy involved um, when it comes to Fortunus Finance and you know, ultimately we created like a brand new rewards protocol where, you know, uh, right off the bat will be um, having rewards come from a war rewards wallet. And, you know, just in case we ever get into a sticky situation, we will mint, but that, that not that's not really our go-to strategy. Our go-to strategy is to actually fund rewards. Um, and so we're, we're allocating like 40% of our initial supply to rewards. So basically, if you think about it, we're kind of like a, more like a federal reserve where, you know, some projects just, uh, increase their supply or they just mint tokens. We actually have the ability to do both, right? Which is either fund through existing supply or mint tokens if we feel we need to, right? And and maybe growth is really explosive or something like that. And we needed extra supply to kind of um, support that, right? So um, that's kind of the main difference with Fortunus Finance. Uh, we're gamified. I think I'm going to stop there. But that's, that's kind of the high level scoop on Fortunus Finance is that we, we basically have the ability to control post-launch post tokenomics and probably one of the best ways possible in DeFi. Gotcha. There's a, a lot to dive into here. So I know... That, there is. That, yeah. <laughs> there is a ton. I, I know that the gamified <laughs> aspects are pretty huge with what you guys do. So how does that work? Mm -hmm. You got like different armies and wars that you can participate in. So let's dive deep into that. Yeah, so Fortunus Finance at a, at a high level is a gamified staking platform. So it's not an auto rebase token. It's not a node. Um, it's a game, gamified staking platform. Tokenomics are basically not really been done. Um, and so I think the whole gaming aspect came into play. And it's kind of funny because it worked out this way. But basically the idea was, hey, we want to make things a bit more fun. We want to be a little bit more creative. We don't want to just have X's and O's on a computer screen and just numbers on a computer screen. We wanted to make it more interactive and just more fun. Um, and what that allows us to do, and the thing is, I don't think I realize how important this actually is, but um, what that's gonna allow us to do is be able to open up to a completely different market outside of DeFi, which I think is super important. Um, so like, of course, our primary market is going to be DeFi because people will get the staking mechanisms and um, the APYs and daily returns and stuff like that. But, you know, ultimately the gaming aspect, I think is one of the most important things just because we'll be able to expand beyond DeFi. You know, we may explain it a different way here, but, you know, we have gaming, gaming components into it where if we went and talked to a bunch of gamers, we could actually explain the concept in a much different way. Um, and they would be able to understand it because it's a bit more of a game than it is a staking protocol. So it's, it's going to be huge for us. I think right now it's just like fun. But I think it's going to be become like one of our biggest advantages in the DeFi space in the sense that we'll be able to kind of expand beyond the current market, which there's, let's be real, there's not a ton of people in DeFi. Um, so like you can hit up the top 10, 15 influencers. And once you do that, it's like, okay, what now? And I think a lot of projects run into that. So, um, you know, we actually have the ability to kind of go beyond the, the limitations, I would say, that just being a DeFi project strictly brings. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. The, the marketing component in DeFi, I think so many people lack because like you said, you know, there's, there's your big influencers, your Twitter guys, the TikTok people, and then what's next, right? There's Yeah. That that's, it's like, where do we go? And I, I don't think, unfortunately, that our projects are like, I guess we just keep trying to talk to the DeFi space. It's like, uh Oh, you might have a problem, right? <laughs> You, you got to increase your reach. This is kind of um, business 101. If you start out super niche down, that's fine because you could probably do pretty well for quite a bit of time. 
but at some point you have to have a, an expansion strategy about how do we how do we garner more of the market and potentially even outside of my current market right um, that's how you get really big and that's how you become quite successful as a company is you know being able to expand on your existing product and not be so niche down but be able to talk to different audiences with different products and services in a different way so you're absolutely right like that is definitely like one of the, I'd say a bigger pain point for most projects that we don't realize is that their growth is somewhat limited, right? There is a market cap kind of, um, kind of stuck on people just because or projects, um, just because of how limited the audience is, which is unfortunate, but that's where we have a big advantage, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, you know, obviously there's some creative ways that people can market things, you know, there's different a lot of different things you can do like seo or uh events or a few other things um don't want to spoil too much we might be uh doing some marketing for some (laughs) projects in the future but there's some uh, some things you can do but it's not not at all straightforward it takes a lot of creative thinking a lot of experience to know what kind of works what doesn't so the fact that you absolutely are are, uh, very aware of that is pretty huge compared to most projects so I like that. Yeah, it's my, it's my e-commerce background, right? Because e-commerce, like you live and die by marketing. <laughs> so like either you're really good at marketing and you can crush your competition. Um, like I think we took our top competitor out of business at some point just because we were doing a lot more creative things to your point. Um, so e-commerce is so competitive. So yeah, marketing is like the most important thing, especially because the only way of reaching people is really through paid marketing. Um, and that's I think that's where that background comes from and why... I feel pretty confident in our ability to kind of navigate the markets. So, yeah, for sure. And I guess moving on to the tokenomics aspects, um, how does that all work? I know you guys have like a variable <laughs> APY, and yes, I mean, that just touches the surface. So I'll let you take it away from here. <laughs> yeah. So let me let me try to break this down a bit. So we 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 believe in options on Fortunus Finance. So. The idea of having something fixed or having something that everyone can do and everybody's just getting the same thing that we kind of threw that out the window. We said, we don't like that. Um, We like to have options. We like people, people need to have the ability to pick and choose what they want to do with their um, tokens. Right. So if everybody's kind of getting the same thing, unfortunately that's quite exploitable. Right. I mean, just a few smart people can figure that out in a couple of days on Fortunus. It's a bit more of a mystery. Um, And that, that kind of is the idea. Um, and so we basically have two different types of returns on the project. So you have your fixed guaranteed APYs. We have two options. One is holding tokens in your wallet and just claiming those via the dashboard. That's 150% APY. The other option we have is a 30 day, um, locked, um, staking against liquidity. Um, and that's 520% APY. And so those are our two guaranteed um, kind of things that I would say they're like the lowest amount of risk. You might be able to argue on the stake and liquidity. You know, there's some impermanent loss there. So, uh, that, that depends on that option. But, um, and then we have four different variable APY options, which I think is probably the most exciting because it's quite, quite unique. Um, no one does what we do, which is a cool thing to say. But there's a reason that we do this. And so the way the variable APYs work is we have a stated APY on each of those options. We call them wars. They're all just staking kind of mechanisms, all done through a DAP. This is not a play to earn game. But basically how those work is we have APYs ranging from 25,000 to 137,000%. The big difference on Fortunus Finance is that those aren't necessarily easily achievable or as as easily achievable as some other protocols like if you just bought the token you're getting 100 plus thousand apy that's scary um it's even scary for a project owner to be like oh crap um because eventually what ends up happening is and kind of inflation starts to eat you alive you know there's a three to six i want to say it's like a six month time frame to get out of that cycle before inflation kind of takes over so basically the way the variable apys work is they start out smaller than the stated APY. So we said 25,000 on the first option. Um, That might start out at like 15,000. And what ends up happening is the longer you stay staked in that option, the better the rewards get. It's a flat rate. Uh, Just an example, the first option, it's it's called a battle against Spartacus. If you're not a gamer, it's okay. 
Um, but basically, the the APY equates to about one percent per day. That's the maximum that you're able to get on that option. And what happens is you'll start out at winning about seventy five percent of those rewards. So that equates to about 0.75% per day. And that continues to grow as you stay staked. I'm going to stop there because I think that's probably enough, Zach. And let me know if you have any questions at this point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. I like that you take it a little bit at a time. Make it easy to, to uh, digest for everybody. So I've learned. I yeah. used to go all the way in detail, and I realized that was probably a bit much for people. So, so basically, the, the the core concept is it starts lower than the stated APY. It grows over time, um, and that's the whole variable APY. And on top of that, even the rewards, so I said, hey, you have a 75% chance to win. There is a random factor in there. So you might win like 80% that day or 60% or 65% one day. Uh, but on average, you'll win like 75% of the time, right? So um, there is some luck involved. That's kind of where the Fortunus name comes from is there's a bit of luck, a bit of chance. You're not going to literally just get a 0.75% guaranteed even. Um, it's There is a random, random um, numbers. There's a bunch of different factors used to make sure it's not too predictable. But, um, but yeah, that's kind of the overall gist of the variable APYs. And basically the whole point, you might be saying, well, what the hell? What's the point of that, Luke? Like, that sucks. I got to wait. What the heck? Um, the whole point is that the people that stay longer within the project, they get the better rewards, right? Because think about it. If I stay longer and I'm in the project for 30 days versus someone else that has joined, I'm getting better rewards. Just at the end of the day, that's as simple as it gets, right? So we wanted to truly reward people long term. Um, and this mechanism basically um, does that, right? So that is the whole point of variable APYs and why I think it's such a cool concept is that you can't just jump in and out of Fortunus and get and get the same returns as everybody else. You got to put in some a little bit of the work. You got to wait a little bit before you can get some better rewards than someone that just joined the project, for instance. So it gives everybody an incentive to hold. Um, we, you know, Some projects say this, but really the mechanism is if you look at it, if I literally sell the top of something and I want to jump in the bottom, I'm still getting a hundred and some odd thousand APY if I jump back in, right? So there isn't really incentive to hold there because it's like, oh, I can always just sell and come back later. And, you know, my rewards are still going to be the same. Can't do that on Fortunus, right? If you jump in and out, you're going to start back at that lower stated APY. So that's that's why it exists. That's why we created it this way because ultimately we realized, well, there's really no incentive for people to hold, technically speaking, all right? And if they want to get out, that's fine. And they can always come back later just you won't be getting as good as percent return if someone, you know, somebody else was kind of holding, right? So, gotcha. sorry to jump too much in the variable API. I just want to explain the reason why it exists is to truly reward people that are staking for a long, long time with us. So. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we got a question. In chat Let me see if there's any questions. Yeah, let's yeah, see. There's a question from Shalim, and I was asking or wondering the same thing. Uh, is there like a buy and sell tax on the token? And then if so, where does all that go towards? Yeah, so it goes, there is buy and sell taxes. It's 10% 10, 10 both ways. So we are using volume to generate some revenue. That's for sure. So it's going to go treasury, liquidity pool, and burning. Okay, so I think right now the current, and we can change these up to 10% both ways. So like depending on project dynamics, we can actually update these, which is kind of what I was talking about before is we're able to control post-launch tokenomics a bit. So in the beginning, we want to put, you know, we want to get a lot of money in the treasury because no one can run a project off of nothing, right? So I think it's 7.5% to treasury, 2.5% to liquidity on buys. For sales, it's 5% treasury, 2.5% burn, and 2.5% liquidity. So that's how the, the buy and sell taxes work. Got it. All right, definitely makes sense. And then... The last question I have before we can move into some of the audience audience questions is uh, an analogy that I like to use a lot, and this is totally ripped off from Yabonx, so shout out to Yabonx. Um, <laughs> so DeFi projects are kind of like everybody sitting around at a poker table, and everybody puts their chips in the middle, and at the end of the day, some people leave with more chips, and some people leave with fewer chips, and unless there's more chips being added to that pile, i.e. revenue streams, um, that yep. you know most people end up, or more people lose money than make money. So what are you doing to add to that 
pile in the middle as far as those revenue streams go? Yeah, so we make money in three different ways. Um, one is the buy and sell taxes. That's that's based on volume. That that exists, right? I mean, that's kind of a common mechanism, I think, on most projects. The second, I would say probably the second highest amount of revenue is N or NFTs. So we haven't talked about NFTs, but basically, if you don't want to wait and you want to just get better rewards today, um, you can go with the NFT. We have Heroes and Calvary. Um, those are a those are priced at a percentage of liquidity pool. But I think that's going to be our second highest revenue generator. And then lastly, uh, we do have, there is a bit of revenue when you first start a stake. We're taking 2%. Um, and that's just to prevent exploitation. So, you know, in some of the easier wars, you could just start a war never. Um, we haven't even talked about that concept yet, but it's for exploitation purposes, which we'll talk about in a minute. But those are three different revenue streams. I think ultimately the goal on Fortunus though, so these are the kind of ones we're getting from the um, when we're starting out, right? These are the ones we have. Uh, so, but the thing is, you'll notice that like, oh, they're pulling rewards from a reward wallet. I mean, we're not minting tokens. We're not going to increase the supply anytime soon. And the idea is going to be build in incremental upgrades that build on top of those revenue streams that we already have. So we already have utility. We already have multiple streams of revenue. And we plan on building on top of those, um, you know, to encourage good behavior in the protocol. Uh, we're going to come up with some other mechanisms that are more playing around with existing supply versus having to pull from rewards or mint tokens. And so that's kind of the future vision for Fortunus. And basically what we're doing in the beginning is shielding ourselves a bit from that by putting a lot of supply against rewards so that we can build some of those other revenue streams to support the ultimately like the rewards that are being given out. Right. So that's the idea. Um, you know, it's not just strictly buy and sell taxes. We do have some other mechanisms and utilities in place. And um, that's that's how we're looking to support rewards. Again, minting is not really something we're looking to do. It's just kind of a worst case scenario if indeed we got into a spot um, that we can actually mint tokens in case that we're not able to give those rewards through the rewards wallet. Got it. And then Questions on that? Yeah. Um, one question, I guess, a follow-up would be in the future, what are those revenue streams that you plan on building out that you alluded to? Because I think in the current state, a lot of those are like in-house revenue stream. Yeah, it's going to be continuing to be in-house as well. I mean, we're not looking for external projects to save our project because the matter of fact is, is if we start relying on other people to do our job, uh, we just hope they're doing their job, right? And that puts the project in a really bad situation. So when it comes to Fortunus, we're going to be reinvesting back into our own ecosystem because ultimately you're investing or you're, you're putting money into Fortunus. If I were to go out and use that money for other purposes, that feels a little weird, right? It's kind of like, hey, it's kind of like saying, hey, I invested in Apple today and Apple told me they're going to go invest in Samsung or Verizon or something like that. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? They would never do that. They take that money from the shares they sell and they actually build in-house products to service their existing customers and try to get more customers, right? Which is marketing and development. So Fortunus Finance is going to be run that way. We're not looking to yield farm for 10%. That's not how you get thousands of percentages and increases or growth. You do that by building great products that attract more customers and that your existing customers actually like to play. So one of those examples, Zach, just to answer the question uh, specifically, is you know we're looking to do some head-to-head -head battles where you can basically build out an NFT character and take on some other people in like an arena or something like that. That is going to be the idea. Um, and again, that would be with the existing supply. There's also higher rewards there, though, right? You could lose tokens actually in those situations. So it's a little bit more, bit more high risk, high reward. But, you know, like some people are going to want to play against another, build out their, a great character and fight, right? For more tokens and not have to wait 20 days for, for those rewards to come in. They just will do the, the gamified way. So that's kind of the immediate next thing that we'll do this year. Um, and that will be another way for us to generate revenue as well. Got it. That'll be interesting to see. That'll be a fun game to play. And then yeah, it's it's going to be like every five minutes or something. This will be like kind of money's detonator on like speed or something. Because, I mean, ultimately, I don't want to wait around all day. Like I would like to play against each other now. So um, <laughs> it'll be it'll be like a regular thing. Uh, we'll have tiers, ladders, leaderboards, stuff like that. But it's kind of, it's basically, think of it as like 
I don't know, like an MMO RPG where you build out your character and like instead of like fighting in a game or something, you're just fighting through the depth and basically it's all statistics based on you know your gear, what you have, your experience, um, and and versus that other person basically. So that'll be the idea. Interesting. And the speaking of NFTs, we do have a question in chat from a young jet. He's asking just about more details about the NFTs. Yeah, NFTs I think are. I don't know. I, I like them a lot. I didn't realize they would be as popular as they are, but I, I guess people love NFTs. And, you know, the, the purpose of the NFTs on the project is to really help you do better in the ecosystem today. Um, so that's the purpose of the NFTs. We have two different types, the heroes and Calvary. Heroes, remember how I talked about like your winning percent is like 75% on that first stake. Heroes will increase your winning percent by anywhere from 2 to 10%. And there's five different levels. So it goes 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So if you apply to that to one of your wars, it instantly increases your win rate by 10%. So it'll go from like 75 to 85 if you were to get the, the best hero, which they all have names. They're all based on like Roman uh, characters or whatnot. And then Calvary is more of a long-term play. Calvary increases the max APY you can get in a war. So that's in here from 1% to 5%. So it just goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Those are the options. And so instead of getting like that 1% per day, you could get 1.05%. Calvary is more of a long-term play. Like, hey, I'm looking to hold this a while uh, because, you know, if you think about it, 1.05% stacked up against one another over time is going to be way better than 1%, for instance. And some of the harder wars, our wars are options for variable APYs or anywhere from the range is big and it's 0.25 to 2.5%, depending on how long you've been fighting the war, what NFTs you have on it, et cetera. Gotcha. So if that helps on the NFTs, if if you want to know more, you can always uh, join our Discord, go to our white paper. It is completely spelled out in there as well. But that's a bit of a just a quick rundown of those. But yeah, our our white paper is like I'm very proud of it. It's super crisp. <laughs> so everything will be completely detailed out in there. If you have any any questions uh, after the fact, you can always ask in Discord as well. So perfect. I will drop a link to the Discord in the AMA Questions channel right now, so people can go check you guys out. Yeah, it's just discord.gg slash Fortunus. We actually got some boost, so we just have a, a legit link now. <laughs> nice. Yeah I, yeah, I still need to figure out how to do that. We just got some boosts from uh, Cheetos the other day in the chat, so shout out to Cheetos. Um, Way to go, Cheetos. Yeah, it's, it's a big help. I mean, it's easy, right? Discord.dg slash Fortunus, that's pretty easy. You know, it makes things super simple. Yeah, definitely. But I still got to figure out how to get the custom link. <laughs> haven't looked into it too hard I got yet. you, bro. I'll show you. All I can right. show you later. Sweet. I got you, bro. Let's see. Anyway, that. so yeah, that's the NFTs. Yeah, no, that, that uh, I think answers it pretty well. And like you said, if, if anybody wants more information on how exactly those work, then they could check out the white paper. But next question. Yeah, basically NF NFTs are, are basically just, hey, I don't want to wait around. I'd rather get rewards earlier. Like, honestly, if you have some good faith in us, then like NFTs is the way to go, in my opinion, because, I mean, you're early, been holding a while. Uh, NFT is going to do some good service there. So anyway, go ahead, Zach. Sorry. Uh, no, no worries. Um... I was just going to say, a next question in chat is from Tez. He asks, uh, which chains are supported now, and will you go cross-chain in the future? Yeah, currently we're on BSC. We're going to pair with BUSD. That's to really kind of avoid any negative market action. I know I realize we're losing the upside, but we're also losing the downside of BNB going down. So we're paired with BUSD. Um, and right now, we don't have a big, big focus on cross-chain just because our focus right now is going to be building out those additional features that I talked about. So cross chain, maybe down the road sometime, but it's not going to be initial focus just because I mean, if people want to buy for Tunis token, they're going to get some BOSD somehow. Let's be real. Um, so it's not a primary focus. It's something we probably consider down the road, but our primary focus is really releasing some of those, what, what we call incremental upgrades to the project, right? So stacking on more features, creating some more revenue generation for us um, and, and kind of, Taking that more gamified route, if you will. So that's the plan. Got it. And I guess to, to add on to that, if you're interested, uh, I know of a good uh, cross-chain bridging service that is pretty minimal work on your end, and as well as for the liquidity pool, 
I, I know a couple projects have actually been pairing with MDB plus. So that might be an option to explore because the way that MDB plus works is there's a, a 1% round trip tax and that tax goes into boosting the floor price of MDB plus. So as more and more yeah. projects pair with it and they get more and more volume, you know, it's a pretty minimal tax, but the APY on MDB plus is I think somewhere in like the 70 uh, percent right now, at least okay. I think over time that'll, that'll go down, but that would be an interesting uh, partnership there. Uh, I would, at least I'm not saying like I'm advocating for either one. I'm just throwing out options here. Throwing out options. No, no, that's, that's totally fine. I think Cyril is also telling me that there's an easy way for people to buy with like debit and credit cards. So that's probably something we'll explore further with him. Just because I think that use case, especially we're going after a really generic crowd like gamers that are not familiar with DeFi, um, that's more of probably what we're going after versus um, going cross chain. So anyway, gotcha. What else we got? There's a lot of questions. Gosh, I should scroll all the way up here. Let's see <laughs> what I miss. There usually are quite a few. Uh, we got one from uh, Peter Devries. He asks, "Would you rather hold Bitcoin?" Or for for ten years, would you rather hold ten thousand dollars in Bitcoin or fifteen thousand dollars of Polygon? Oh gosh, I'm gonna go Bitcoin just because we, I don't really know where Polygon's going, right? So Bitcoin is kind of like the stable, like I don't know, stable is probably a bad word to say considering where we are. They but I would just say it's so it well, it's just so well known. Like Bitcoin going to zero is like never going to happen. Polygon failing can happen. So I'd rather stick with Bitcoin just because I think it's more proven, it's more common, institutions are becoming more familiar with it. I would hold Bitcoin just for, I'd say like more safety than anything. You know, there might be a lot of upside in Polygon if it works out, but yeah, we don't know, right? So it's hard to say. I'd rather stick with Bitcoin. It's more proven, I would say. Yeah, fair enough. I like that answer. I can get behind that. I probably would say the same. Uh, next question in chat. From yes, blockchains don't always work out, unfortunately, right? So, that's yeah. the thing. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Next question in chat from Kingin. I think that's how you say the name. Um, yes, after the conception of this idea, have you ever thought of abandoning it? And considering the fact that there are other uh -huh. competitors in the space. Uh, I don't know of any competition that's kind of doing what we're doing. I could be wrong about that, but not that I'm aware of. I think what we're doing is, is quite unique. Um, there's some other gamified type of protocols, but they're still not really doing what we're doing. Um, but you know, as far as have I ever uh, thought about abandoning it? No, but I have had concerns. Like we've definitely, beginning our APYs are much higher. We definitely reduce those um, just because doing some calculations and some maths, um, just realizing, hey, this burn rate is just way too high and obnoxious. So definitely play with the numbers a bit, I would say. And we, we also made quite a few tweaks down the road um, when we were doing some testing, kind of thinking through things. So I'll give you an example. The price to start a war used to be 0.5%. Um, and then we realized, oh, gosh. And so on all the stakes, the first three days that you stake are completely free, basically. And what could have happened is someone could have basically just staked gotten 2.25%, only paid 0.5% in their balance and just unstaked right away. So something I didn't mention about the variable APYs is every five days, you got to support your stake. Um, this is a mutually kind of beneficial relationship. And what that does is it burns tokens, makes the, the protocol more deflationary. And um, basically what I'm saying is we kind of found a bit of a loophole. We found a few loopholes, actually. That was one. The other one was like partial withdrawals. So we don't allow parts, partial withdrawals on the stakes. Just because um, the whole point of Fortunus is to create some level of buying pressure with the token. And we call these rations. So again, every five days, you got to give your stake a little bit of something, something to keep it progressing and getting better over time. So we also don't have partial withdrawals in the stake for that reason. So you're either in or you're out. <laughs> so uh, just I, I don't think we ever thought about abandoning it. But I, what I would say, it was like refined way, way more over time. Like it used to be a rebase token, or at least that was the idea originally. Then we kind of realized, ah, that's maybe not such a good idea because then we're just expanding supply. We're going to have similar issues. Um, then we became a staking platform and then we created a rewards wallet. And so it's been an evolution of an, an original idea and it's just gotten better and better over time. And I'm sure some of our early 
I see some like early people in here like Kick and uh, Sent and a few other Albert, a few others that they probably know that we used to have some of these things, but we've definitely evolved the idea. It wasn't just, hey, this is what we're doing and hope to God it works. We did a lot of data modeling, some crunching, some testing, some thinking through things. We actually had, I mean, we've been building this project since April. So we've had quite a bit of time to really think through every scenario to make sure that the that system cannot be exploited in a very big way. So I don't think about abandoning it because I think DeFi lacks and is desperately in need of innovation and not just like the same thing over and over again, just slightly different. So um, I still felt we had to deliver this project. It just doesn't look like what it used to. You know, in April, it looked way different. We used to have a 3 million APY in the hardest war, I think it was. Like, it was outrageous. So anyway, <laughs> I digress. Gotcha. Yeah, I think being able to adapt to things that pop up because the initial idea is never, ever perfect. And it can always use refining. And even once you launch, it can always use refining. So I like your Absolutely. idea behind the the ability to change the tokenomics, um, you know, after launch. Yes. You know, especially being a docs person, I think that's a, a very good addition to have because it allows you to pivot when you need to. And I, that, I mean, a lot of projects, they kind of get screwed over because like most smart contracts aren't uh, changeable. You know, once you, once you deploy them, that's it. You know, good luck. If something's wrong, Absolutely. You redeploy it. <laughs> like it, it's, yes. it's tough. You have to code in the ability to change it, not just, you, you can't just change it whenever. So. That is probably our biggest advantage, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I really will say that it really is because it's like, does the Federal Reserve always print money? No. Um, do they do they always increase uh, interest rates? No, right? So we kind of have the ability. So buy and sell taxes is one way. I think that minting and, and pulling from a wallet, uh, that really gives us that ability, right? Like aside from everything else, like the variable APYs, in my opinion, are also great because it incentivizes people to actually hold versus just try to swing trade or catch the top and bottoms and just get the same rewards. That is definitely probably one of our keys, but I like as of late, I really think our post-launch tokenomics, to your point, Zach, and being able to manipulate the the tokenomics uh, is definitely one of the most important things about this project that no other pro like a lot of projects to your point get stuck. Like um, I know a project, I'm not gonna mention it, it was a big node project. They're like, whoops, we burnt too many tokens. We have to do this huge migration. Hope to God it works. Didn't work out so well. Um, and that's because they didn't have the ability to mint to your point, Zach, they didn't have the ability to do something about it, right? We could do something about it. Um, there was another project, very big project. And what happened is the supply kept expanding on them because again, that's how the smart contract works. There's really nothing they can do about it. They try to do a migration. It didn't work out so well. So to your point, Zach, uh, we definitely thought through like, Hey, what if this happens and we need to be able to do X, we need to be able to do Y, we need to be able to do Z. Um, that is definitely agreed, probably it's close between variable APYs and, and the tokenomics, but I think both of those are probably the most differentiating factors as to why this can work much better than other DeFi protocols. Yeah, 100%. And I think a lot of projects don't do that because if you can change the APYs, I mean, a lot of people might... Be concerned like okay you can change all, all these factors with tokenomics you can mint yourself a billion tokens like there's a lot of risky ways but the fact that mm. you're doxed and a lot of projects just aren't doxed and you know that there's that, that trust barrier too that you know, some people are going to have an issue with it either way but I think uh, yeah i don't i don't like being on camera you know I'm, I'm kind of a nerd you know i'm kind of a coder right i'm an it guy like <laughs> but this is the right thing to do you know so to your point, Zach, me being on camera holds me accountable for everything I'm doing. That's yeah. what it does. Like, and as much, maybe I shouldn't bring up the name, but there's another protocol where the guy is, is docs, maybe not as like trustworthy as probably me, like as I am, but I'm just saying there's only so much a docs person can really do to a protocol. You can't get away with like a ton of uh, sketchy stuff, I would say. Um, yeah. So to your point, Zach, if you need to pivot, I'll get on camera. Boom. I'm right here. You know, like I, I can kind of spell the story out. I can definitely explain it in a very honest, it's all on the blockchain. I, and like, that's the thing I, when I was first starting out, I'm like, oh, I don't really want to dox myself. Like it's, it's kind of risky. Like I'm not so sure, but 
it is the right thing to do and everything's on the blockchain anyway. So if people wanted to find me, I'm sure they could, you know, so it's kind of like, it's kind of silly not to. And to your point, um, it basically just means like, I'm never going to try to rug anybody because well, I'm, I'm, you literally know who I am, where I live, you know, like I live in the States, I live in Ohio, like those things you just know. And it's like, I'm not going to try to do anything sketchy because of that, just because people know who I am and it's not who I am anyway, but <laughs> I'm um, just saying like just that factor alone and having, like you said, having some of those riskier type things um, is, is less risky because like, I'm literally just flat out. Yeah, this is me. And like, this is what's happening and this is who I am. So totally with you boss. Yeah. I like it. And then while we're on the talk, the topic of doxing and KYCs, a lot of people have mixed opinions on whether or not, a KYC should even exist or how effective it really is. Uh, I'm curious yeah. to hear your thoughts. Yeah. I mean, I prefer docs because I get concerned. I mean, we've seen KYCs kind of people get behind those somehow in shape, way or form. I think KYCs can be somewhat manipulated. I think doxing, it's hard to run. It's hard to hide, right? Once you show your face and tell them your name, you're not getting very far, you know, like they're going to be able to track you down. Like the FBI can kind of track me down. Right. Like, so KYCs are great. Um, they're great when you're anonymous, but ultimately I think doxing is, is the best, the very best form. And you've kind of seen this, you, I'm, I'm sure you know this act. We've kind of seen this starting to take over DeFi a bit, which is great to see founders coming out and doxing, right? Like MDB, I think Imp. I don't know about great, but like, all the projects that actually believe in what they're doing are not afraid to show their face, which is the similar spot for Fortunus as well. So I'm not afraid um, then, and I'm kind of showing my face saying, hey, this is what we're doing and this is what we're going to do. Uh, I think that's probably the highest form of trust you can get. And again, if anything were to go wrong, boom, I'm right here. You know, like I'm, I'm not, I can't go anywhere. So. Yeah, I I think I pretty much agree to a T with that opinion on KYC. A lot of people are strictly like, no, DeFi should be anonymous. I think that's a little extreme. Uh, Some people are like, okay, KYCs are worthless, and you should always. Uh, I think that's a little extreme too. But I, you know, right I agree. In the, right in the middle, I like it. Yeah, I agree. I think I think forcefully doxing people or something is maybe a bit much. But I'll be honest, like I don't really want to invest in projects that don't have docs owners. <laughs> or like teams. So anyway, that's just my take. I know that's extreme probably to your point, Zach, but that's just kind of how I am. No, I, I like the approach of better safe than sorry, for sure. But yeah, more community questions. Let's uh, see. We got Triton. He asks, as far as the treasury goes, what will it be reinvested into? Yeah, the, the main thing is going to be marketing, right? Getting the word out, going to other... Um, audiences and, and exploring with them and, and trying to test new things in different audiences. And then the secondary thing is going to be really development. I would say the last thing is going to be team operations. I mean, we got to pay people. <laughs> so I think projects don't like to talk about this, but like ultimately we got to pay people in order for them to work for us, right? Like, and sometimes that's unfortunately a lot more than you'd like. But at the same time, I'd like to just say we got to pay people, you know, like that's part of. On a real company, I mean, you use actually, usually in a real company, it's like people, marketing, and then development. I think probably in our project is going to be more like marketing, development, and then people. But um, that's what the, the treasure will be used for. And, and again, the big focus is going to be on growing for Tunis. If we grow for Tunis, that benefits everybody that's already invested, right? So our number one thing is going to be growing for Tunis, not trying to put our money somewhere else, not trying to support some other protocols to support for Tunis. That's where your, that's where your investment's in, right? So I, investment, I should probably use loosely, but that's where your money is in, right? So my job at the end of the day is grow for Tunis in two primary ways, right? Creating features that people love and secondarily getting the word out, right? And making sure that everybody knows for Tunis name, why we're awesome, why we're great, and you should come along and join us, right? Because that's where the true return is. That's where the value is, is the project that you put the money into, so. Got it. Nice. He also asks, what are you adding to the game to appeal to gamers? It seems easier said than done. Uh, definitely easier said than done. You got like your spot on there. <laughs> um, so I, I think like 
again, it's all about the way we explain it, right? I didn't really mention the word wars, rations, soldiers. We use all these terms in the white paper, and it really just means tokens and staking. Um, so don't be freaked out when you read the white paper. But um, the way I'd explain it to gamers is in a much different light. Uh, we'd probably be more visual as well. Like, we'd probably need to show them some stuff, like, look how cool the dap is. Um, we'd have to be a lot more visual and probably a bit more intriguing to a, to a gamer to say, hey, you can play this game and actually make real money. That's probably the main pitch. But the pitch is going to have to be way different. I think it will require some experimentation. Like, I'll be honest, when we first started doing AMAs on Telegram, which first off was probably a mistake in and of itself, but like I was talking about this like it was a game. And then I was like, gosh, like nobody in DeFi really knows what the hell we're talking about. So that's why today we've kind of stuck to more of the DeFi terms. Uh, if you go talk to gamers, it's got to be a completely different ball game. And I think that will require a bit of testing and trying to figure out what works the best. So very, very good point, though. It's not going to be easy. Um, the gaming crowd's a little touchy, right? Like I, I played video games like my whole life. So I kind of know <laughs> the space relatively well. I know it's a little touchy and people have really strong opinions and you have to be kind of careful about that. So but the fact that I have experience with that and I, you know, I have experience with marketing in general, I'm not really scared to take that on. That's a challenge. I like challenges. You know, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a big guy on growing and getting better every day. Something we say at Fortunus is like, hey, we just want to get 1% better every single day. If we do that, we'll be in good shape, right? We'll be sitting pretty in, a, in 100 days, right? So, um, yes, it's going to be tough, but I'm not overly concerned about it because I think we'll figure it out at the end of the day. That's what we do. We figure stuff out here at Fortunus. <laughs> So, got it. Yeah, I, I like that approach of getting one percent better every single day. I think that applies to business and to personal life for sure. Absolutely. I I just rode for forty five minutes on the bike before this, like just as an example. Like, and we owe it to every like we. Uh, it's a bit selfish, right? But at the same time, we also owe it to everybody around us to get better. Because if we're not getting better and we're interacting with people, like. I think it's a bit of a disservice to not get better for like our family, get better for our brothers, our sisters, our, our dads, our moms, our wives, sons, daughters. Like we owe it to everybody around us to get better. Um, and that's, that's kind of opportunities run. Like every day we're doing something a little bit different and we're kind of exploring options and discussing things as a team. So um, some days more than others, right? We might make 3% one day and 0.25% the other, but you know, at some, at some point it averages out. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Zach. I think that's a key thing to know is like, hey, if I'm not growing, I'm dying. Like you're either you're either growing or you're going the opposite direction, which is kind of dying or going the opposite direction, like not getting any better, actually getting worse. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely a mindset for me and a mindset for Fortunus because like I'm at the top. So that kind of mindset is all around and I'm pushing that down all the time. So. Definitely. Yeah, I'm I like you know, talking about personal development, you know, kind of whittling that into AMAs. And I mean, it's really good to get to know the people that we're, you know, chatting with a little bit better and their mindsets on, on things. Cause I think, you know, having a strong mindset like that when related to personal development highly correlates to business and their, their ability to, to grow as a person and a business. I think those are strongly correlated. But uh, by the way, now I, I'm with you 100%. By the way, I think you're right. Like, that's the other thing. If I'm getting better, you know what's also getting better? Everything I touch, right? Like, that's, and that's kind of wild to think about. Like, it's such a butterfly effect and it's so cheesy. It's probably like, oh, it's so cliche, Luke. Come on. But that is true. Um, and by the way, someone's saying they can't join the AMA, Zach. It looks like this channel is limited to 25 people. Oh, shoot. Um, it should. <laughs> so be. I don't, I don't, that might be a server thing, but. I, I like clicked off and if you look at it, it says 25 out of 25 but anyway maybe that's something to figure out will, next time i will see if i can figure that out real quick uh, in the meantime okay. uh, triton asks uh how is the apy being backed as far as price stability goes yeah good good question so apy is going to be backed by the rewards wallet which you know, I don't think I mentioned this with the treasury, but I envision a bit of the treasury going to rewards. I do envision that um, maybe not as early, like early on, but I would say probably within like the first 30 to 40 days, we're going to be putting tokens in the rewards wallet. I do foresee this being a thing because ultimately we need to keep that thing healthy. You know, if we keep the rewards wallet healthy and we're burning tokens, this is a very good thing for everybody involved when it comes to price. 
anytime we you know, are getting low and we have to mint tokens, again, I think that's worst case scenario, but ultimately we want to back the the rewards wallet with revenue as well. Um, and not just, you know, put it in our pockets or something or just spend it all on marketing or development. People will deserve, you know, the time they spent in Fortunus. And I, I really deeply believe that, which is why we structure things the way we did. So it's guaranteed in the sense that you're not, you're always going to get those tokens uh, when you unstake or you leave the war, we call it. Um, and I do foresee us supporting that with our revenue actually as well. So I don't think I mentioned that, but that, that was in the back of my head. I've been thinking about that a lot. Cause I'm like, okay, we have this option. We need to support the option, right? Like anyway. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, uh, as far as the AMA being full, I think it's because when somebody puts on like a share screen or a camera, then it limits it to only 25 people being able to see. So Okay, let me, let me, oh, I turned it off. Wow, whoa, yep, that's now, crazy. Now it's not limited. That sucks. That sucks. That's, that's really brutal, actually. Yeah. Freaking Discord. No. There's, so there's they can join in now. Thing. Here, let me. Telegram has got one game. advantage. <laughs> You can actually game, game the system if you were to share his screen, Zach, or if one of us was to share his screen. Um, I'm, I believe they can still join the chat. They just can't see the, the actual stream. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. You're saying like he, he share his screen, I'll do audio yeah. only, and I have, I'd be wanna... on video somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, so if you do, well, no, if you just share your screen, Cheeto said that uh, they'll share. So if you want to... Just pop back up. Here, you mean turn on my camera, or are you saying shit? Yeah, like share my sorry, screen? sorry. Turn on, turn on your camera. Sorry. Let's see. And then Cheetos, if you want to stream that, that would be awesome. Oh, I see. You have to click stream or something. Okay. Hmm. This is very you don't, you wild. Don't have to do anything else for it. We. I don't think we've ever been in a spot where AMA is capped. This is fantastic. What a what an achievement! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> So yeah, what what else is important? Um, I don't know. Maybe we should just take some more questions. I, I mean, there's a few other things that are important. I think that we kind of skimmed over every five days. You got to support your stake by burning some tokens. We call those rations. So if you see the word rations, it just means tokens. Um, what that ultimately means, you need tokens in your wallet every five days, whether you save some and don't stake everything. Um, so now I should turn off my camera or you're saying now we game the system. Sorry, it's like interrupted myself. Uh I believe you should be good if Cheetos. Yeah, there we go. If Cheetos, if you pop his picture up, yeah, you got it. Um, and I think we're we're good now, unless we end up with another issue where someone can't join. Okay. So so anyway, um, that's a very big part of the of like Fortunus as well is that we one of our focuses is burning tokens because ultimately go back to price. Um, you do have to have some burning mechanisms in place if you're going to be distributing rewards, right? In any way, shape, or form, basically. So, you know, one of our mechanisms to get those better rewards is actually having to either acquire or have some Fortunus on hand. So, you know what this does is this means Fortunus is actually valuable. Like, it actually has value tied to it because it's worth something. It's worth better rewards, right? So, that's a very key thing about Fortunus as well, is that the token actually has to have value in order for the price to stabilize or go up. If you don't have that in place, it just lives on hype and, and pumps and dumps, right? So the thing about Fortunus is that it actually has value. One, in order to get better rewards, I got to have some in my wallet at all times. Um, and then two, those NFT upgrades, those are only acquired through with the Fortunus token as well. So there's going to be a level of buy pressure. And that is the idea is that we're not having to just constantly give out rewards. We like to say at Fortunus, hey, it's it's better if people earn rewards versus being given them. That is kind of like the MO of the project because if you're just giving things out, let, let's just think about that for a second. If I just continually print money and I kind of get no value or anything back, what ends up happening? Bad things, right? So kind of saw that with the US dollar. <laughs> so um, the idea of Fortunus is that people should get what they deserve not necessarily everybody just getting the same thing, no matter what your behavior is. That that doesn't work, right? It doesn't work in real life. It doesn't work on DeFi projects. So um, that's why it was important us to create some level of value to the token and making sure people are earning things, not being given them at some ridiculous 
ridiculous rate. So unless they unless they held for a long time. So long time. We're talking about months, by the way. This is not like three days or something. And you get to the max APY. It does take literally months to achieve on all four options. I think the first one's like a little under two months, and the the highest option for that two point five percent per day is like six months. And then this is probably a good time to mention all wars or stakes will come to an end. So remember that ration functionality I just told you about. Every five days, got to come back and uh, we say feed your troops. You just put tokens against that war, basically. But um, they all get burnt. Those start to increase once you reach the max APY. So you know the max daily return is anywhere from one to two point five percent. Once you reach it, rations or the amount to stay in the battle and collect those rewards does go up by. It's 12.5% every day. So it doesn't take very long before the, the, the tokens you owe are more than the tokens that you're getting out of the stake. So that's another key thing that I think we learned is that you can't give out rewards forever. I have a few projects in mind that like literally people got in a year before everybody else and it was a disaster for people that joined late. We wanted to avoid that and say, hey, we need to kind of protect people that are coming in by limiting to some extent, I mean, six months, quite a long time, two months, quite a long time, right? But we need to protect people that are coming in um, later rather than earlier, right? So it's good to be early for sure. No question about that on this project, but we also need to protect people that are coming in later where the new people aren't getting completely wrecked by the people that have been on the project for like 60 to 120 days, right? So we realized that, and again, we thought through things, right? You can kind of tell. Um, that's a lesson learned from a lot of projects. You cannot let people record, like just collect rewards forever. They will destroy you, right? Like, and it's not intentional. I, I don't blame people for selling and getting what, you know, what they took risk on, right? But from a project health standpoint, you got to limit that to some extent. Otherwise, you can really get into trouble. Yeah, for sure. So it look, you know, we're coming up on oh, just over an hour now. Um, are there any other questions that you want to kind of get to or um mm. do, you think we, do you think we covered it all all right we covered long time holders getting rewarded <clears throat> more so than everybody else we covered deflationary type stuff we covered the tokenomics uh we covered the utility aspect right actually holding it as value and you know get it, being able to acquire the nfts and then we talked about treasury right so i think we've covered all the key points i'm just looking at a you know we're getting a What's cool is we're getting a YouTube video put together, by the way, that has those five points that I just read off it, in a very simple fashion. So this would be a very good YouTube video to kind of expose your friends, um, even people that aren't that familiar with DeFi. It should be somewhat relatable, but um, we're getting a video put together with those high level points just so people understand Fortunus in about two to three minutes and it's not super complicated. But yeah, that's all I have to really share. I know I know, investing back into the project and not having outside revenue streams is a concern of most people, but I'm running this like a real company in the sense that when we get money back in the door, we reinvest into the company. We don't go try to like buy somebody else or <laughs> put money in somewhere else. That's not how a typical company is run. If you look at any company on the stock market, that's not how they run either. Um, they invest back into their own company and build better products and services for for their existing and future customer base. So. Got it. And then one last question from uh, Dr. Jiflo. I, maybe that's how you say the name. I uh, just said Dr. J Flow. That's what I call him. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. J. -Flo. Actually, a doctor, by the way. <laughs> okay, the name fits. Him. Anyway, uh, he yeah. he says, "Remind everyone when launch is." Good question. <laughs> I probably should have covered that. The fair launch is going to be August 21st. We have a potentially a very big partnership lined up. So we pushed the go live date a little bit. Uh, we, we kept saying early to mid August, but we're going to push out a few, basically like a week or so, because we have a very big partnership that we're about to announce uh, probably in the next week or so. Um, and, you know, we, we feel like that's going to give our best chance to create a very healthy system or project from launch as far as price and, and liquidity is concerned. So we pushed the date a little bit, but it's going to be uh, August 21st is going to be the fair launch. Uh, it's going to be 72 hours and we're going to launch probably on the 25th of the 26th is what I'm imagining. And I don't think it's going to be through your 
standard kind of PCS or pink sale. We're kind of using um, somebody else for that. I can't release too much information because it's not quite official and I don't really want to spill the beans until they're ready and they kind of sign the dotted line. But, um, but yeah, that's the, that's the fair launch and the launch date. Thank you for asking that question. That's probably super important. <laughs> yeah. Saving the best for last. We got to give away some stuff too, don't we? I forgot about all the giveaways, dude. Like, yes, we do. Oh my. We got a, a I believe it's a hundred BUSD five whitelist spots and a hero NFT. So what are you thinking as far as giving those out? All right. Whitelist spot. The first five people I go to Fortuna's discord and file support to get say I'm part of the Cardinal house AMA, you get a whitelist. And basically what that means is it's 10% additional tokens. If you are to participate in the fair launch. So it's up to a hundred dollars in value of Fortuna tokens. So that's the benefit of being on the whitelist, but just go ahead and do that. Join our discord discord.gg slash Fortunus, file a, a ticket. First five people that do that are whitelisted. I kind of like doing it that way because it's competition a little bit. You gotta yeah. be quick on the keys. So that's the whitelist. And then I feel like we were talking about Triton a lot. So as far as the the hero, the random hero NFT. So we do have a random chance NFT, which gets you level one through five. It costs, I think the same price as level two. But I think we'll give that to Triton just because I feel like he was driving a bit of the conversation there for a minute. And I think that was cool. So Triton, if you can just go to our Discord, file a support ticket, drop your your BSC wallet address, we'll, we'll get you a random hero NFT on launch, direct to your wallet. And then $100 in BUSD. Hmm, Zach, I feel like you should kind of do something with that. I don't know. I don't want to drive everything here. So what do you okay. think, Zach? What about the 100 BUSD? Hmm, that's a good question. Usually I do like the the big grand prize of the, the dollar amount to the best question. Um, so okay, cool. Let's see. I mean, I, I would have given that to Triton, but he's getting the NFT. So what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> the second best question? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, how about... I mean, I have, I was thinking maybe like, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe if everybody could list out what they like the best about Fortunus, I don't know, like maybe that's kind of a cool thing to do. Yeah, see, like see if cool. someone can articulate what we just talked about, that it's kind of like a, uh, gosh, I feel like we're in class again. Hey, pop quiz. <laughs> yeah, I, I would just say drop quiz. it down in the, yeah. drop it down the AMA question, just what your favorite part is and what you think. I, I'd be interested to see what people think is like the most, the biggest differentiator for us. Cause I have my ideas of course, but I'd be curious to see what other people think. <laughs> Spartan Wars, super, super simple. Let's see what else we got. Several people. We got We got to expand on that a bit, a bit Spartan. Come on, come on. <laughs> Let's see those captchas. Oh man. It could be a humorous one too. Yeah. The, the captcha is unreal. Uh, we take security very seriously. We had some bot attacks on our discord very early on in our life, like may. Uh, and so we had front man come in. He's been helping us with discord security and, um, ah, yeah, fair enough. Defied gaming instead of gamified DeFi. Yeah. Interesting. Let's see. <laughs> Yeah, Cam, if you click on the image, sometimes there's there's actually letters that run off the picture screen that you can't see unless you click. That's the trick on our caption, by the way, sometimes. Let's see. Have we already created art? Yeah, art is coming, Ko Koto. We, we do have art in the, in the uh, pipeline. Um, we're working on that currently, actually. There's actually some, in our, there's some alpha in our Discord right now in the main chat where I was kind of dropping some earlier. But we're getting that built right now by our, our development team, which is Kecko Inc. Uh, it's a corporation with tons of experience in blockchain, websites, you name it, they've done a lot. Um, so yeah, DeFi with game theory. I do I do like that. I agree. Come on, what else? Let's see. Biggest draw is rewarding for more holding longer and also needing to feed the troops is a good idea for token utility. Yeah, I'm with you. I think that definitely is a very, very big thing for us. I like that. Schlim says uh, he likes that. He's about to win 100 bucks. <laughs> yeah, I was laughing at that. Yeah, that was funny. 
By the way, I want to just thank everybody for coming out today. It's it's truly a pleasure. Every time I get to talk about Fortuna's finance, it's always a pleasure. And it's just good to see people are, you know, still in DeFi, right? A lot of us got hurt, but we still believe in what DeFi can bring to the world. And so do I. Otherwise, I wouldn't be running a project. And so it's just good to see everybody in here today. I appreciate y'all, y'all joining. Yeah. I'm going to have to go with Zelfernide here because I feel like that kind of really hits what I, I think is probably best, which is basically you got to hold, which is going to increase probably token utility a bit. Same with the uh, feeding your troops. Yeah. I like oh, that. Cam. Okay. It looks like Cam got it. So if you're having trouble getting the Discord, just click on the image. We should probably like, you know, I'm going to tell Frontman to put that as a, hey, by the way, make sure you click on the image. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, some of the captures are a little tricky. But yeah. I'm I'm actually telling them that now. Perfect. But like Luke said, like thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's always that was an honor to have so many people listen to what we have to say. Like, you know, taking valuable time out of your day to listen in. So I appreciate that. It it really means a lot. And then as far as our Cardinal crew members, we do post AMAs. Um, so post AMA calls where we hop in a separate chat with the crew members and then talk about the project okay. a little bit. Uh, Luke, you're welcome to join us for a little bit. Uh, we get a more uh, private and intimate conversation instead of having the whole group. <laughs> uh, if- yeah, I can jump on for a few minutes. Maybe not too many, but I can I can jump on for like five ten minutes. That's fine. Um, Perfect. Looks like Zelfernight is just saying thanks. So yep, okay. You know, I, I still think that was probably the best one. Um, so yeah, I'll, we'll just go with Zelfernight for the hundred hundred BSD. Good job, man. Perfect. Welcome, Cam, to Discord. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Anyway, all right, everybody. Thank you so much, Zach. Seriously, thank you to you and the Cardinal team for having us. Um, I know you guys are, are building something yourself, so. Looking for what you guys have in the space. And if you ever want to come talk to us, you're you're more than welcome to. Um, we'll probably get bigger over time. So you're you're more than welcome. We will extend the offer back if you ever want to talk about the stuff you're doing or whatnot. So anytime you'd like. For sure. Offers on the table. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate your time too. And now I will move you over to the crew voice chat. And for everybody else in the Cardinal crew, uh, join up. We'll have a, in a quick 10, 15 minute conversation. And yeah, looking forward to All it. All right. So take care, everybody. Cool. Thank, thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.